Hello everyone, my name is Li Hao. Today I'm going to show you how I create a custom transition which I call a Flipboard Animation Transition. This inspiration comes from a tweet from Pine where he showed one of his art uh, created using JavaScript and CSS. As you can see over here, uh, this is one of his art. And while looking at it, it reminds me of a Flipboard where you can see in a departing terminal where basically text being flipped in the flipboard and in the transition you can see different characters showing up before it reveals the actual text that you want to the target text right sorry for my bad explanation but you get the idea right so i'm thinking of creating this animation as a transition where if you reveal the text you have this kind of a uh, transition where it flips uh, show different kind of characters until you actually reveal the actual characters of the text that you want to reveal, right? So that will be a great transition idea that I think of and today I'm going to try to do that. So first of all, we have this custom transition starter, uh, which is uh, nothing but um, a checkbox, uh, which uh, check and uncheck to reveal the text. So you can see here we use a if block. So if you want to follow along, you can um, get the link at the description where you can get this starter and you can follow along with me right so let's get started so first thing first a custom transition so a custom transition is nothing but a function so let me name this transition I'm gonna call it a uh, flipboard and it's gonna return an object so to use this custom transition I am going to use the transition directive. I'm going to apply for both of the span. Okay. And over here, uh, what we are going to do is we're going to use the tick function, which takes in a T. Right. So um, a custom transition is a function that returns an object. And that object has uh, several uh, properties that you can define. And that, uh, of that will define how your transition will behave. Right, tick is one of them. So this tick function takes in a T, which so this tick function will be called by its field uh, when the element is being transitioned out or in, and it will be called on every frame. Uh, so this T value will represents uh, whether uh, it's it, it it stands for time, but it represents uh, what the state of that element is. So if you are transitioned in, meaning uh, from nothing to something, then the T value will uh, be a value from 0 to 1 and as so 0 as in it's not shown on the screen and 1 is being shown on the screen and if the element is being transitioned out then you'll get from 1 to 0 right so this tick function will be called a lot of times while transitioning and the t value you get for each time will be different right from 1 to 0 so to get started a uh, flipboard over here on the other hand actually takes in an argument called node so this node will be the actual the elements that uh, the animation is uh, the transition is being applied to. So this node for this case will be this pen and for this case will be this pen. Right? So let's get started. So the first thing first is to get the text for the text contents of the node. So this is the text that we are going to reveal. We're going to keep it as a variable because uh, in the meantime, when we are transitioning, we're going to use, um, we're going to change the value over the time. Right, and so this will be the final text that uh, will be shown on the user. Right, so uh, over here, uh, if t equals to 1, which is at the ending uh, state, ending where it's, it should be revealed, then we're going to set, we're going to revert back the content of the node to be uh, the text. And then we're going to return over here. So we're going to stop here. And in between, we're going to figure out uh, what should be the value of uh, the text. Right, so... Um, okay, so now, uh, if you turn on and off, uh, you didn't see much. So let's let's figure out uh, how we should um, try to do this, right? So imagine this is the text, right? Imagine I have a text like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This is the text. And if the value of t is say 0 0.5, um, what should I see on the screen, right? So um, 
So this is this is something that we need to figure out. So I'm thinking, uh, if the time is t is 0.5, which is a halfway point, then I should at least see half of the text, and then the rest of the text is probably nothing, right? So probably I represent it with dash, um, and probably uh some of the text will be re uh revealed as like x which is the which these two characters will be actually tries to uh will be replaced by a random character right so imagine these two will be replaced by a random character and then uh, this is the characters that has been re revealed because uh, we have passed the time of 0 0.5 right so if the time is say at the sort of like beginning then if I my text is a b c d e f g again then the text I'm going to see probably will be a and there's some render text and then dash of like this is like kind of empty space that represents um the unrevealed text right these two will be uh random characters right so as you can see here is that um it what characters that we are going to show it depends on the position of the character right so we are going to f probably f create a string like this this will be the string that we are going to create so i'm going to call it like uh str string i'm going to start with the empty string and probably we're going to set the text content equals to string right so now what we're going to do is we're going to try to construct this string okay so uh probably we're going to loop through the length of the text right so this the length of this string that we're going to construct will be equal to the length of the original string over here so i'm going to loop through the length of that original string uh, so i less than uh, text dot length i plus plus so now what i'm going to create is a variable called j which is the value of i divided by the text length. So this is the percentage of um, where the character is. So I'm going to represent like each character will be uh, a percentage of where it is, the position of it, uh, relative to entire the length of the string, right? So the character would be uh, one out of uh, say uh, seven, and the middle of text will be say three point five out of seven, and the last character will be seven out of seven, right? So J will be that position. So if j and t is the same, or j is less than t, meaning j is uh, at a position that is in front of the t value, uh, we are probably going to uh, reveal the actual text, right? So if j is less than t, then I'm going to append the actual text, which is... Um, the text i right and then probably we're gonna have uh, one or two extra characters over here um so this is a bit arbitrary but what i'm gonna try is that probably i'm gonna say if it's 0.1 i'm gonna like 0.2 percent of the text uh, less than like 0.1 to 0.2 percent of the text should be a random character right so in this case i will say like 0.5 to 0.75 right which is like um 1.5 times of t uh if it's less than so else if j is less than 1.5 times of t i'm gonna have a random character and the rest of it will be a dash right so let me define this function called random character over here. Uh, firstly is, let me collapse this. I'm gonna define the function over here. Okay, so um, I'm gonna create a string called uh, random cars that contains basically all the character that you can think of. Even including numbers. Right, so um, what I'm gonna have here is that I'm gonna randomly pick one of the character. So 
uh, math dot random uh, times the length of the curve. So this will be giving a, a random value that is within the length. So I'm not sure, 26 characters plus 10. Uh, so it's a random character, random number that is within 36. And I'm going to round it. So I'm going to call it floor. And after I get that number, I'm going to pick it. I'm going to use that over here, right? So this will return me a random characters from, from this set of string. Okay, so I think we are done over here. And let's see how the effect looks like. Right, it's a bit fast. So let me slow that down. Uh, rather increase the duration. So I'm going to have the duration of um, say 5 seconds. So the default duration of a custom transition is 400 milliseconds. Which you can see, uh, you can, which you can find it on the Svelte docs. So now we have a duration of five seconds. So let's take a look. So you can see here the text is, the length of the text or the length of the span is is vibrating, right? You can't see the dash fix at one point. Um, that's because um, the width of each character is different. It's different, right? So while we are randomly choosing one character, um, say I is actually narrower than say N or S, right? Because different characters have different width. And if we choose a narrow or slimmer character, uh, then the dash will be, then the whole width of the text will be narrower. So that's why you can see that uh, the a jiggly part on the dash over there. And that's because the text has different width, right? Um, if we use a monospace text, a uh, font, so if I use monospace, font family, then you will not see that jiggling effect because in essence, a monospace uh, font have the same font weight for each character, right? Now, as you can see the dash basically still uh, uh, fix, fixated on the screen. Right. I think we are really good. We are making really good progress. Uh, this is exactly the effect I'm looking for. Um, exact, except one point that I probably want to point out is that I find that the character is moving uh, random, uh, shuffling way too fast. Uh, probably I want to slow that down a bit. But let's see, but how are we going to do that? Because we can't control when Svelte will call this tick function. And actually Svelte will call this tick function on every frame, right? So uh, we can't, on every frame when this function is called, we are going to generate this string uh, every time, right? And because we have random characters generated on every time the tick function is called, we can't guarantee that we are getting the same random character. Therefore, uh, the character will going to be changed uh, very fast or rather out of our control over here, right? So one thing we can do is that probably uh, over here in this function before we start to recreate the string, we can do some check, uh, check that, uh, sub check the subsequent uh, invocation of the tick function to see whether it passed a certain number, a period of time. If it passed that period of time, then we are gonna recreate a new string. If it's less than that period of time, then probably we're going to say, hold on here, we don't have to do anything, let's just skip what we're going to do next, right? So uh, every time when you want to measure like the time, we need a variable outside of here because we can't define that variable in here because this variable will be created every time. So we're going to create a variable out here uh, in this scope uh, that basically represents the last time that we just executed this, this take function, right? So uh, every time when it has tick function, we're going to calculate the current time. And if the current time is um, minus the last time is greater than say 30 milliseconds, right? So uh, usually a browser will execute on a if we execute this on every frame, usually uh, browser renders at 60 frames per second. 
that means that um, it will be this function will be called on every 16.66 second uh, milliseconds right so this will be like double of that amount of time so if it's greater than that then uh, or rather if it's less than that we're gonna end here we're gonna not gonna do anything but if it's greater than that uh, then last time will equals to the current time and then we'll allow to calculate a new string. All right, let's see the effect. Right, you can see here definitely it's shuffling less uh, frequent than we had just now. If you can't tell the difference, let me bump this up a bit. So 300 milliseconds. So text is being updated every 300 milliseconds. Right, probably very slow, right? 100 milliseconds slightly faster right so this is updated on every uh, 100 milliseconds uh, rather than every frame so every frame this function will still be called but we are not going to do anything if it doesn't pass uh, 100 milliseconds right so this is one of the way that you can kind of control or throttle how fast that you uh, you want the tick function uh, the rest of the tick function to be called so there you have it a custom flipboard animation Feel free to comment down below. Tell me if I made any mistake over here. Uh, I am very happy to discuss and happy to improve and fix them because I don't want to teach the wrong thing. So feel free to comment down below. I will read all of them and reply all of them. So have a nice day. Bye. So thank you for staying till the end. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to stay notified of my next video, please hit the subscribe button down below. As always, stay safe and well. See you next time.